Hey, this is Maximum Chips, and my name is Michael. And uh, in the next video or two, we're going to be putting together a couple more of these Montgomery four shelf metal storage units for the uh, studio um, that we've been updating some uh, some storage for. So hopefully, we can use it a bit more as a, a, a dust free workshop and a sewing room and that sort of thing. Uh, as you can see, they, they worked out pretty well. Uh, we had a few challenges along the way. We go into a bit more detail with the brackets and putting together. Uh, these ones which are a little bit different than what we did before uh, we had another go at using the included mounting uh, kit that comes with them to stop them from tipping over you'll just have to wait and see how that goes uh, if you're enjoying the channel please hit subscribe um, also check us out on Instagram we've got a great, great bunch of photos uh, that we're putting up there for some old projects and stuff like that uh, and also Twitter and you can follow us on Facebook as well so let's get into it let's build one of these things Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Michael and uh, thanks for watching. Today we are going to be putting together uh, a couple of these uh, four shelf metal storage units. Um, these are from Montgomery, um, pretty similar to some of the other ones that I've been using around the shed and in the studio. Uh, I just recently put together one of these um, this morning uh, over there, uh, went pretty well and uh, you might have seen the other build video for the five shelf, slightly wider unit from um, Pinnacle, I think it was, maybe of Montgomery. So this one is a slightly smaller shelf, 910 mils across, 1830 uh, high, and only 410 deep. So not quite as big as the other one. Um, behind me, you can sort of see a similar unit with uh, same sort of depth. This one's a little bit wider. I believe that's about 1200, uh, and the same height that we're gonna be working with today. One of the main differences with this one is that it's got um, some brackets that go between the two joins. The actual upright joists are made out of uh, two separate bits of steel. Um, and in this particular unit, because there's no shelf uh, at the halfway point, um, there's a couple of brackets which I thought were interesting. Uh, and I think I had something similar when I built um, uh, a similar heavier duty unit out in the shed about a couple of years ago. Um, that one was around about $150. Um, whereas these guys um, picked them up at Bunnings Warehouse in Australia for only about $40. So this is cheap storage, just cheap shelving. It's not meant to you know, hold up the world sort of thing, um, but it is pretty good. Um, we'll do a bit of a tour and some other videos. You can see we've got all the toy stuff over there, all the Christmas and all the stuff. It's really made a great job for, for cleaning up the storage room, but uh, I certainly wouldn't, you know, it does hold a fair bit. Uh, was it 560 kilos and um, up to 140 kilos a shelf so they are pretty strong um, and we'll put this one together now I've actually got two to go into the space here uh, across this wall it's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze there's only a couple of centimeters in it so um, we'll just have to build them in place like we normally do and um, yeah see how we go um, when I was putting together the one up against the wall we struck a, a small problem with uh, mounting it um, actually onto the wall uh, and then came up with a really good solution something that worked a bit better than the first one we did I think so what I'll do is we'll, we'll build these couple of units here get them to a point um, and then we'll actually stop and um, possibly even do a separate video on uh, mounting these ones to the wall because the solution I came up with for that one earlier this morning is a, is a really good idea I think so we'll see how we go so right now we're going to undo a boxing this one Let's see what's inside the boxes are sold for about 20 kilos, so not exactly light. I'm not quite sure. I'll just do a quick pan down so you can see what's inside the box. Yeah, it's a little bit high. So you can just sort of see there, that's the box. You've got all the brackets there, neatly laid on top. The instructions there, a um, couple of packets with the brackets and um, the pins to, to hold the whole thing together. And then the shelves are wrapped together underneath that. So, yeah, should be about the right height. So rubber feet and pins, put them there for in a set. These are the side rails. So you can see the railing system. Basically, boys, all these lugs that go into like a like a keyhole sort of thing on the side. 
and you can sort of see there in profile, hopefully, um, that ledge there is where your shelf will sit. So when you're putting them together, it's very easy to get them back to front or upside down. Um, the easiest way I find the thing is to just look for that, that shelf ledge, and that always goes on the inside. Um, so these ones are actually pretty good. I, I found the first one we did, the, yeah, the one, the other build one we did uh, last week, the, the mild steel you could definitely feel was not as strong as, as even what this one is, and certainly um, the other one outside. No, but these ones are pretty good. The other one, in case you haven't seen it, we were sort of tapping it with a rubber mallet and then go for the second or third one, we sort of built it straight through it and broke the two things off. You can still use it as a uh, on the thing. One of them's holding it up, so we're just going to rivet in place the other one. And just roll it up here. That's the uh, bracket that goes along the side. So your shelf lugs just go in there and then you just sort of give them a, a small little tap down. Uh, and that puts them into place. So two of those end to end, you can sort of see there's a, a couple of uh, slots there for a pin, and then a bracket goes, a small little bracket goes in between there. Quickly get my hands on a bracket. These took me about half an hour this morning to get the first one up without stopping and carrying on. So normally, we put a pin in there, pin in the top one, slides into the bottom one, and then this one has just got a couple of lugs on it, and that just simply slides in uh, top and bottom in there and sort of click into place. Not sure if I mentioned I picked these ones up for $39 at Bunnings. So not the strongest shelf in the world, but for the price, pretty impressive. So I'm just going to show you up close if I can. So that's the pin. It's got a little head on the top of it. That simply slides into those two top holes. And if you're lucky, it'll pull through. Otherwise, I just use a flat head. Old flathead screwdriver, I don't mind getting a bit knocked up. It's just got a bit of weight to it. So I've just knocked that all the way down. And that then makes it easy to slot in the bottom one. And so it's a little bit wobbly. The other ones will stand up, and once you get the bracket in there for the shelves, they will hold fairly well. So that bracket's just sitting in there now. You get the lugs on the outside. I'll do this on the bench once I do the first one. Just again, give a bit of a tap. The flathead screwdriver and away. Let's just build those out now. I'll, I'll fast forward through this and just keep going. Radio. So I've got those four built. The uh, other thing that it comes with is just some rubber feet. I'll bring one of those over in a minute. You can have a look at that. So I've built four of those. And so these rubber feet, I just simply go into the bottom. Uh, it just gives you carpet or whatever, a little bit of extra protection, a little bit of slip protection, I guess, if you're on concrete or something like that. Um, yeah, so I'll pop those other ones on as well. Right, 
So that's the four of those done. Uh, I find the best way to build these things is to basically build them in place. So put them down where you want them to be and just sort of build and knock them together where you want them to, to, to be when you're finished um, rather than trying to build them somewhere and then um, slide around or pick it up and move it. Um, they are fairly stable. Um, the corner joints at the moment or the joints seem a bit wobbly, um, but once they've got some weight on them and they've got the four shells, four or five shells holding them all together, they are fairly stable. Um, and obviously we do still uh, attach them to the wall um, just for, for pull down safety and we'll go into that um, a little bit later on. So um, we're going to build, like I said, two of these here side by side. Uh, I think I'll start with the one in the corner uh, up against the wall here. That's actually an opening to the toilet. Um, these are only 410 mils uh, deep. So they will sort of protrude a little bit into the doorway to the toilet, but not too much. And you'll easily be able to walk in and out without um, uh, being obstructed by these things. So uh, I guess the main thing I've got to remember in um, putting together these things, I've actually got a double adapter power point down there. So um, I might actually think about doing something about that as we go. Maybe put a power board and pop it up the top. We'll see if I've got one outside. Um, Otherwise, yeah, fairly easy to, to um, fix that up later on. All right. So they do actually come with the, the shelves nowadays come with a little um, anchor kit so you can anchor it to the wall. Um, there's a couple of bits in here, uh, both for attaching it to masonry brick walls or plasterboard walls. I said I tried the plasterboard wall one on the shelf over there uh, earlier this morning, I think it was, and it seemed okay at first. And then I went to sort of a little bit of, do a little bit of adjustment. I was actually going to put a second one in next to it and just pull in on it, pull the whole thing um, out. So. Um, I think the main reason was that's a little fly open thing. And the idea is you, you drill, drill a hole, I think it's about an eight mil hole, and press that, pop it into the wall. And then the whole idea is when you put your screw through, it opens it up and keeps it compressed against the wall. Well, I just sort of couldn't get enough. Maybe I didn't screw it in enough to hold it on. That might have been the problem. Um, could also be that that's a fairly narrow gap. And I'm pretty sure that my plasterboard is deeper than that. The uh, Ramset wall fasteners that I use uh, can deal with, um, the particular ones that I'm using at the moment deal with either, um, I think it's 10 kilos in weight and vertically, uh, yeah, vertically, um, and a depth anywhere between 6 and 16 mils on the plasterboard. So you've got a much greater range. These are more like towards the 12 to 15 range. So I just don't think this thing could get enough grip on it. It was probably sitting more like that. And as soon as I pulled on it, the whole thing just kind of collapsed on itself and, and came through the hole. So I put a ram set one in. Um, and also the other thing I didn't like about them was um, these ones, they don't give you any flexibility of having a gap between the shelf and the wall. Typically, when you put these things together, you're dealing with architraves on the bottom of the floor. So your shelf is normally you know, a couple of centimetres away from the actual wall. So um, the way I get around that with my ram set ones, I'll show you a bit later on, but I have 10 to 15 washers on the other side of the shelf between the shelf and the wall um, as a spacer. And then that way I can actually tighten the shelf up. It's nice and tight, but it's not sort of leaning right back up against the wall being bent over. Whereas this one kind of had to... There was no choice to put that spacer in, really. Um, uh, I might have been able to do something with it. But I'll show you the ram set ones a bit later on, and, and you, know, you can choose to, to go with this. It's great that they're giving you these now. It was only a couple of years ago that you didn't get anything like this uh, when you bought like a bookcase or shelves like this. So it's great that they're actually giving people these sorts of things nowadays. It's very important to fix uh, your bookcases and shelves up against the walls. Last thing you want is the, the kid pulling the whole thing down on top of themselves.
So what I might do is just reposition the camera so you can sort of see what I'm doing a little bit better. Move this out of the way. You've sort of seen the unboxing and all the rest of it. Actually, I'll just show you something. So these are the shelves, um, just 8 mil uh, MDF shelves, got a bit of a notch on each corner which makes it easier to, to fit in if they've got a little bit of gap on the corner, um, just easier to sort of get in and out uh, of the shelf. Um, and this is what I want to show you, it's got this strapping on, normally you'd sort of go for a knife or something like that. This kind of strapping you can always find where the joint is, you just peel that back a little bit, give it a bit of a tear. And off she snacks. Trick I learned at work one day. So yeah, I'm going to reposition this camera and uh, so you can sort of see what I'm doing back here. I might turn the fan on for a bit because it's getting pretty warm in here. And uh, we'll finish off building these shelves.